Hey, it's Dave, Sean conspicuously absent, but not for long. This is just a little placeholder recorded after the fact. You probably don't need this explaining if you've clicked on something that's clearly labelled as a part three, but perhaps you were tricked. Perhaps you were tricked by me. Perhaps this is all a trick. Buy some crypto. No, please don't. But yeah, just a quick refresher. If you didn't catch the end of the last episode, we ended up having to break off this half of our recording into a part three. Otherwise, there'd be so much on the cutting room floor, we'd be trapped in the edit suite, unable to leave. Just had to say something, otherwise the episode just sort of starts in the middle of us talking, and that would feel a bit weird. But anyway, here's that, then. One of the things that ancient Greece is famous for is its theatres. Mm, plenty of those. And as I mentioned in the first half, this gets a bit more complicated because the Romans often came along later and were like, those really are good theatres, we're going to add to them. <laughs> and so, again, I'm going to fall afoul of the nitpickers if I, if I don't get the, the, oh, that part's Hellenistic, mm. but that part is Roman. Mm. But as just a broad statement, I think most people have to say that Epidaurus is one of the best Hellenic theatres you yeah, can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really huge, it's in an exceptional state of preservation. I would have preferred to have seen it under blue skies, but look, it was still great to make it there. Indeed, indeed. Um, it's about 45 minutes from Nathalie, I think, so not yeah. a sort of big distance. Uh, definitely worth seeing. Yeah, it was, it was gorgeous. I mean, I, I kind of imagine that that this was the, the type of place, if not the place, um, where the, the Greek tragedies were originally performed. I don't oh, know. Absolutely. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, it, that was around the time of, you know, Aeschylus and... Uh, yeah, what was he? He was probably about 512, 513 BC, I think he was born. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was amazing to be there. I did, I, I think I was invited to, I was standing right in the, in the centre of the theatre and I uh, think someone did invite me to sing. I, <laughs> <laughs> I tried and got too embarrassed and stopped. <laughs> yeah. There's, you can see the spot there, which is supposed to be the sort of acoustic sweet spot. Yeah. Again, I won't go into the whole thing, but the acoustics really are as remarkable as people say. Of course, you can just do the thing that these lads do, which is, you know, fair enough, which is, like, race you to the top. That's yes. That's the other thing that people do when yep. they get there. But, um, I, just one thing, Dave. You've uh, spelled out the distinction to me between amphitheatres and, and theatres. Yes. And uh, amphitheatres are uh, kind of 360, all, all the way around. That right. is right, and that's something I got wrong for ages. I had to, uh, you know, been yeah, corrected yeah. on the internet once for getting that wrong. And, yeah, fair but, enough. But where, where are amphitheatres? I've not seen one. Um, yeah, you have, actually. Have you we? didn't see the inside of it we, when we were in Verona. Oh, okay. That was an amphitheater. Look, tell what, since we're doing this, <laughs> I feel pretty happy, like, <laughs> Sean and I, it's not even something we set out to do, but we have seen a pretty incredible selection of yes. ancient theatres at this <laughs> point. I, I'm trying to, and yeah, look, I'm slightly bragging at this point. <laughs> I, I it can't lie. I'm kind of proud of this. Just trying to go roughly in order we saw the Amman theatre mm. which is this sort of huge Roman theatre yeah. like that's massive I, I've really been spoiled for theatres <laughs> for well, ancient well, theatres it's been fun taking around all these we've, <laughs> so we've had the Amman theatre um, I'm trying to think so Epidaurus was kind of the yep. next major one but then having then been to Turkey we also saw deep breath <laughs> You can watch the Antalya episode for all of these, but there was, the Temesis one was insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aspendos is just, yep. get out of here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sagalassos was still uh, breathtaking, and even Sea Day was, was amazing. Still not done. And then in our recent kind of turkey uh, rampage, let's be honest, I was not <laughs> was. ready for how uh, massive the theatre of Ephesus was. Yeah. That thing was mental, but that there was, was also the theatre of Miletus, which, which which was the really steep one? That was uh, that's, Pergamon. Uh, that's Pergamon. Yeah, that's we think it's the steepest theatre in antiquity. That was nuts. Um, Hierop oh, Hierapolis was the one where we got too hot. We didn't quite make it to the theatre. Oh, I know. But the funny thing is, we've been so spoiled for theatres. I didn't <laughs> I even mind. I was like, yeah, it's over there. I can see it. I'm going to get this slightly shaky <laughs> footage of it, but that's cool. But the, but that, I guess that's why. Um, I mean, I, I took particular delight in, in the Tholos. Because that I'd never seen any, anything like that before. Yeah, the Tholos so tombs are, are really so special, and of course so well preserved because they were, you know, underground. So that's mm. that's a plus. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, and of course I'm forgetting the two stadiums: the the stadium at yeah. Magnesia and the one oh, at Aphrodisias. Yeah, I'm now spoiled for stadiums too. Those are, <laughs> and I say normally when you see those, uh, they are. It's just a bit of like overgrown. Like oh yeah, there used to be a stadium there. Oh, man, yeah. Whereas those were just like. Ah, 
Uh, You've got to be kidding me. This, this is unbelievable. The aphrodisiac one was, was yes, get, out of this world. Here, man. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so, suffice to say, we've seen a fair share of ancient theatres. And that's not, I'm not even getting into all the sort of smaller sort of Odeons we've seen. That's, that's yeah, a list yeah. that I can't even bother. Um, but anyway, Epidaurus, yeah, really great. You, you know, it's, as far as this whole see the best of Greek history in five days, mm. that's the one, that's pretty much the best Greek theatre for mm. you to go and see, actually go and see it. And it's it's known as a sort of major tourist site, so it's actually quite accessible as well. I mm. think there's even a bus service there. Um, so yeah, well worth it. There are also some remains of the city there. Those aren't quite as impressive. Yeah. It's the problem of like anything that was sort of buried in antiquity, it is always gonna be just sort of like ankle height. And you can see they've stood a couple of pillars up just to sort of um, give you the original height. Mm. I think it is one of those things that makes you, oh, that's, I, don't, oh, I don't want to spoil it for everyone, but it does make you really see archeological sites differently. Yeah. When you realize that anytime you see a pillar upright, yeah, yeah. Probably been stood back up to. Like the, uh, yeah, the, the, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus. Well, that's the prime example. <laughs> well, and that, that, a, that's all there is, really. There's just that's the pillar. What, I mean, you see, that <laughs> I'm in favour of, because otherwise yeah. it would be so underwhelming. Yeah. For, like, as a modern interpretation, like, look, we've taken some column fragments from the site and we've stacked yeah. them one atop another like some haphazard Jenga tower. Yep. This is the sort of height we're talking about. Yeah. No, that, that's good. That's that's worthwhile. That That's kind of necessary. Indeed. Yeah. I like the fact that, that a, a stork now, a stork, a yeah. pair of storks now kind of rule the uh, <laughs> the temple. <laughs> They're yeah. just kind of overlooking everything. I like to think he's just up there just constantly quoting Percy Shelley. <laughs> it's like, look upon my words, yeah, yeah. mighty and despair. Ozymandias, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's so it's. Uh, I get it. Win. You know, people are people are there to see columns. Look, uh, I'm I'm all ab I'm about that life as well. I can't mm. claim to not enjoy mm. seeing an amazing row of columns. But while there may be the scantest few that have survived the two thousand or more years, mm. they've probably been stood back up, dude. It's just the way these things yeah. work. And we've seen more than enough sort of fallen columns at various sites like yeah in as the especially earthquake prone Aegean mm. it's like it's not looking good for you <laughs> but anyway yep um coming back from Epidaurus these are a couple of interesting entries which I'd really wanted to see and funny enough they're not super ancient <clears throat> depending on who you talk to but these are the and I hope you're ready for this the Greek pyramids yeah who'd have thought <laughs> now, again, these have become something of a lightning rod for conspiracy theorists or just generally uh, bad history takes. I mean, pyramids are kind of the center square of that <laughs> pseudo archaeological bingo card. <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah. You know, so anytime you have anything slightly pyramid shaped, you know, that just it, yeah. it attracts a certain type. Especially of if they're, they're, they're non Egyptian, they're kind of like all, all more mysterious. Yeah, and look, don't get me wrong, oh, grief, the comments about, oh, you hate the Greek pyramids and I hate you. <laughs> no, th this is obviously, this is super cool. However, the dating is disputed, but that does not mean that everything is completely up for mm. grabs. Uh, this one we're showing you here, so this is the first one we saw, which is considerably less impressive, because if no one told you, oh, this was once a pyramid shape, you wouldn't really be able to yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, I deliberately wore this uh, t-shirt strategically for this day. Uh, <laughs> um, it, really cool, but you know, like, okay, so fair enough, that one's not impressive. The more impressive one is at Elinico, which we had to sort of double mm. back and just drive a little overshoot Nafco. Mm. Now that one is much more impressive to see. So yeah. if you're gonna see one, go and see that one. Um, again, it's been kind of talked to death. And look, I can understand it would be so much more fun and exciting if these were actually some ooh, super ancient uh, <laughs> thing. But to mo the, the conservative dating is probably from the Hellenistic period. Yeah. Again, the actual citation in the lower thirds there. Don't argue with me. <laughs> argue with the sources. I'm just a guy. But yeah, the wonderful thing is the question mark about it. It is the... the uh all the uh, subject for curiosity surrounding these buildings. Yeah, we're still, we're really not sure what they're for or why yeah. they, these, these handful of pyramid structures were built thusly. They don't really seem to fit. There's a possibility they were like watchtowers, but it's like, really? 
That's yeah. what you went with for a watchtower? Like, so it, the, the, apparently the, the entrance to the doors don't yeah. really fit for a defensive structure or something like that. It is really fun to just, just conjecture and speculate as to, as to their possible purposes once upon a time. But yeah, uh, you've got to, I guess, realise that that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah, it's fun to speculate in the car with your friends. Yeah, yeah. Don't just go home and then make that thumbnail of like, oh my goodness, the mysterious secrets <laughs> of the Greek pyramids. I've cherry-picked this one study that says it's way older than everyone else. <laughs> I'm just going to look at that and then I'm going to yeah, see me in the comments for a proper slap. <laughs> now, as you can tell, we'd already fitted a lot in for today. We just had one more thing we wanted to try and do. Um, this is Argos, mm. um, which for an English audience is a bit strange. Like, yeah, what? yeah, you, you, you wouldn't get that impression from the catalogues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the city of a thousand catalogues. <laughs> Um, yeah. So anyway, this is the ancient city of Argos. To be honest, um, the previous trip we mentioned back in the summer, um, we saw Argos in a bit more detail then. We got a good shot of the theatre. Oh, I forgot to put that on the list. Well, Sean wasn't ah. for that one, but um, that's pretty cool. Um, that was actually, again, one of the days where Greece was setting a heat record, so you could barely spend 15 minutes outdoors before you had to, like, run to shelter. Mm. Um, so we were mainly there to go and see the castle, which is something that I hadn't got around to before. When we were there in the summer, we didn't have a hire car at that point. And the castle's pretty high up. And like I said, yes. 15 minutes in the heat and you felt like ill. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, hey, let's walk an hour Eesh. up that small mountain. That seems like a brilliant idea. Let's... <laughs> so yeah, apart from getting a few of these sort of wide shots, you can uh, get some amazing shots of it just from across the bay in Nafplio. Nice. Um, so yes, we finally wanted to see the castle, but guess what, after kind of behaving itself today, and look, it, these shots from the pyramid were taken just well, 45 minutes early. You see blue skies, beautiful, like across the bay. And then just about the time we got to Argos Castle, the rain came back. Alas. And we were atop uh, a very high rocky outcrop in an electrical storm. <laughs> um, I was let's be honest very unwisely so sort of like venturing outside of the car with one of the umbrellas just <laughs> trying to just about get some like shots without getting the camera drenched um that wasn't a great plan and oh, well. we sat in the car and then waited for a while to see if the rain was going to pass it did not so shots. we we got some okay shots of the outside of argos car so we didn't get to go mm. in it sadly but here it is, it's it's brilliant. It's actually, I had this pegged as a uh, as a Crusader castle, but to be honest, most of the masonry you're seeing here is actually from different periods of Venetian occupation. Oh, is it? Um, I didn't realize that. But there we are. So yeah, Argos Castle had been a bit of a washout. And I say, by the time we got back to Nafplio, we, we definitely earned the evening off then, and the rain did slacken off mm. eventually. Um, I can't talk about Nafplio without referencing this horrifying, ice cream homunculus figure <laughs> stalking oh, yeah, the yeah. back streets <laughs> oh uh. my goodness and again just <laughs> by weird how this i swear this is like a sort of side project that hr geiger kind of <laughs> just designed and just left in I, that I, not least because it does i mean look it really does have that phallic it's... shape enjoy <laughs> your nightmares kids <laughs> and ice cream anywho the following morning and this was our last day um, we j had to get out of Nafplio in reasonable time, but we just had time to kind of see Nafplio in mm. the sunshine. And I feel like it's already been said, this place is so special. Again, ignore all the history, if you wish. <laughs> you you will, like, Nafplio is one of the best possible places oh, you can it's, visit it's lovely. It's in just, Greece. It's, yeah, got a lovely kind of harbour and, and uh, cobbled streets and, yeah, it's, it's really quaint and gorgeous, and everything you want. Even though it's kind of busy in summer, of course, in October, it was much more, uh, more much quieter. But it's not kind of crazy overloaded. No, you can it's so have, chill. yeah, it's so not chill. been ruined by tourism. It, it's still very, you know, it feels like just this old historic town. And it's actually pretty easy to get to as well. Mm. It's like a couple of hours out of Athens on the bus. Mm. Um, I can't recommend this oh, place highly enough. I should resolve my my kind of top three highlights I alluded to earlier. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, so they're not in order of, of anything. And probably, uh, the, well, in order of, uh, of places I've visited. 
Uh, Mistrust was one, and Monombasi was two, and Napoleon would be the third. But, yeah. um, but this is kind of uh, take, calculating for the fact that I was rained on for <laughs> much of my Athens experience, and uh, quite, quite emphatically. It does colour <laughs> it a little bit. So we saw a couple of brief Mycenaean sites, and I'm looking at the time code. <laughs> I said at the beginning of the episode, like, oh, we'll try and kind of keep these to about 20 minutes. I don't know why I always tempt fake doing that. It's, it's, it's never going to happen. You know, the Antalya episode came out at about 44. It's this back and forth kind of like improv format. It doesn't lend itself to being brief. No, no. But anyhow, yeah, so this started. is the uh, Mycenaean Cemetery of Dendra. This is the Acropolis of Midia. Both pretty cool, but I'd understand if they're not actually on your highlights thing. To be honest, I say we'll summarize at the end like the best things you can kind of see, but mm. you, th this particular area, the Argolid, just has all of the best Mycenaean stuff. And look at me, I've already forgotten to mention Tyrins. Mm. And the clock is massively ticking down. Uh, we saw that in the summer. Again, this is probably the second most significant Mycenaean site outside of Mycenae itself. Uh, it's a really interesting sort of citadel. It would have originally been pretty much out the waterfront, but the coasters have sort of advanced out by mm. several miles since. Um, it's, it's great, you, you gotta see it. I'm actually just gonna leave it with that. Um, we've done a lot of Mycenaean stuff. Mm. And you can see, I'm sure that if you're going through this for yourselves, you're not gonna maybe crack all of these all of these Mycenaean sites, or maybe you are. Good on you. Yeah, I mean, you you you, you do worse than to just copy this itinerary. Um, you, might as well. Look, I mean, again, it's a lot of driving, and depending on the rest of your party slash partners' enthusiasm for historic sites, they may not thank you, <laughs> <laughs> or you know they might. Let's let's well, let's find out. And I'm just going to quickly name drop the Tholos of Tyrans because I forgot about that, and that was actually really dope. And you should go see it, but it is a bit hidden. Um, but yeah, that's that one's well worth seeing. Right. Okay, so by this point, we're nearly wrapping up. We were heading back to Athens. It is possible that you could have done this trip asymmetrically, i.e., uh, land in Athens Ooh. and then left from another airport. But we'll talk about that at the end. So the main thing we had left on the list was. Corinth. Now we'd yeah. seen Acro Corinth on the second day, but now it was actually time to see the ruined city of Corinth yeah. itself. Famous for Paul's epistles. Yeah, yeah, and probably the most standout part of the site is these pillars, these of Doric columns still standing from the Temple of Apollo. Mm. Uh, though in fairness, there's so many different sort of smaller sites outside of the main kind of fenced archaeological plot. Um, including that you can just see these just just by the car park, kind of did, did you say excavated. Th 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 there were Doric capitals, or shouldn't they be Corinthian? <laughs> there are some Corinthian capitals. Again, I, we probably should have done this early on, but Doric is the one that looks comparatively plain. Yeah, I'm just, Ionic right. has the spirals. Yeah, the twirls. Corinthian has the the sort of the leaves vegetation. Going on, yeah, yeah. And, that, and the Corinthian was the the super fancy one that. Generally, the Romans favoured. There is a bit of a one-way system around the site. <laughs> Saw someone like they actually had like a whistle being blown on them, like there was a lifeguard for the archaeological site because yeah. they just started ignoring <laughs> the tapes and just cutting across and things like that. So do follow the trail. Um, it's it's well worth seeing. Um, we yeah. were super fortunate that just right near the exit to the site. Suddenly, kind of apropos nothing, this is a big group just all filed out at once, and I managed to get. This always feels special. It felt particularly special when we managed this at Ephesus. Mm. Uh, we got in there like through the gate at 8 a.m. and without embarrassing ourselves too much, like jogged, yeah. and we saw this whole like the the street just going down to the Library of Celsus, yeah. devoid of people. I'm not a morning person, but that was worth it. Utter bliss! Oh my goodness, that was amazing. And yeah, just in the middle of the day to suddenly get just the shot of the deserted Roman street in mm. the middle of Corinth, like that just always makes my day when you get those shots devoid of people. It's mm. just the, it's the best feeling. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it is pristine and paradisical. So yeah, Corinth, well worth seeing, and there's a lot of sort of smaller, sort of lesser sites in the kind of outlying region. You could spend a couple of days just going around and treasure hunting all of that. Anyway, with that, it was time to get back to the Corinth Isthmus bus stop, and then hand our hire car back and get a bus back to that's, Athens. That's always the feeling of massive relief, you know, because <laughs> you've been driving anything oh, man, about that. that was, has something happened to the car, and when when it's hand, handed over and um, and you know there's no problems, no no stone chips or whatever, you do you tell can, me you about it. Breathe. And I'm always I'm perpetually nervous on these things, mm. mainly for the sake of the hire car. Mm. It's just so easy for something to go wrong, and that can just really yep. ruin your trip. So yeah, it is always a massive relief just to hand that back. 
Anyway, so back on a bus um, into Athens. We had a little bit of time before our flight flew out uh, later that evening. We did actually get to just see one last thing which we hadn't had time for in the rain. And funnily enough, leaving this right till the end, what if I told you that this is probably the best survivor in Athens, possibly? I'm going to stretch my neck out here. The best mm. survivor from classical era Greece yeah. on the entire mainland. I'm intrigued. This is the temple of Hephaestus. Now, I mentioned that Athens is actually divided into a lot of different sort of archaeological parks. And this is kind of around the main agora, sort of the north of the Acropolis. And there's a bunch of sort of ruins there. I can understand people not getting too crazy about a lot of these sort of ground level ruins on that particular part of the city. But the Temple of Hephaestus is basically in pristine condition. I mentioned earlier about columns getting stood up. No, these have been standing pretty much the same. They were fortunate wow. that this got turned into a church. Amazing. Which didn't normally happen with sort of ancient temples. Um, and so that's really what saved it. I mean, actually, in fairness, the uh, Parthenon was turned to a, a church for a while as well. But okay. then uh, the combination of a Venetian cannonball and an Ottoman powder store um, gave it its current appearance. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, oh, well. that's that one. So, yeah, the Temple of Hephaestus, this classical era temple, pretty much exactly as it would have looked in antiquity. Wow. Just there. Um, it really bugs me that they've got so many signs like uh, so keep off the grass and actually a person sitting in a booth there specifically to scold you if you <laughs> ignore those signs. <laughs> I was just trying to get this whole thing in frame and if I'd been able to just pace back like two to three meters I could have framed these shots better. Anyway, whatever. Uh, we had a some fairly quick dinner just by the bit where um, the Athens <laughs> It is, despite the fact that Athens has just all this incredible history on display, um, unfortunately the metro was built right through this sort of historical part, so you can just watch all these sort of graffiti covered metro trains just gliding straight yeah. through all these ruins like, <laughs> it hurts, but okay, okay, fine, 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 fine. Um, and with that, we were basically done. So that was it, that was our five day history road trip of Greece. Let's just quickly recap kind of a lot of the main stuff there. Yes. So you start off in Athens. You've got obviously all the Athens stuff. The degree to which you want to see all that. On a sunny day, a sunny day where <laughs> Athens is not setting heat records. Which must be most of the time. It is most of the time. Well, we were actually, it was it was quite rare that we managed to catch as much rain as we did. Yeah, that, that did seem a real one-off. I mean, yeah, really, April <laughs> to September, you've got the best chance of like blue skies it's mm. the, that's the the rule not the exception so you can obviously see the parthenon make sure and try and do that early in the morning um definitely see the arch of hadrian and again go past the library of hadrian you can uh, you can go to that site if you want there's a bit of stuff to see there um but the rest you can kind of mostly just see by wandering around and you'll already know the amount that you want to see there Definitely see the Parthenon Museum, but bear in mind, as I said, that the Archaeological Museum of Athens mm. is actually a different... And it's, it's huge. It's, it, you could easily spend hours there. I mean, there's, there's, there's loads of statuary there. In the Parthenon Museum, yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there's an amazing amount of stuff. And I say, I have not yet made it to the, uh, the Archaeological Museum of Athens. It's a bit embarrassing because of the confusion <laughs> I mentioned. Um, <laughs> So, like, yeah, I'm still looking forward to getting back to that. And, yes. uh, oh, you did see the death mask, didn't you? Well, not did the real one. That? That's a oh. copy. Is it? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, the real one is um, sitting in... It's funny, it's like, there's also a copy of it sitting in the Ashmolean. It's quite a, com it's like quite a popular thing to oh, okay. copy and have. Yeah. Like, yeah, fair enough. Like, yeah. Okay, so that's Athens. Then, again, get a bus out of Athens. You know, you've got to make your way to the, the bus station. You'll figure it out. It's it's doable. You've just got to make an inconvenient walk or get a cab. You're probably smarter than us. Um, <laughs> Acro Corinth, unbelievable, like Venetian castle. Yeah, that was really cool. Way up high. That's real special. Though, if you don't have a higher car, you look. Like I'll be, I'll be the first to propose a wildly impractical walk just for the sake of getting a bit of extra footage. <laughs> Ask any of my friends. I'll do it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. just to be on, you know, you probably don't want to be here. I mean, when, when you get there, there's a lot of walking to be done because it's just so immense. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going you're gonna to want to hire a car up there. There's no public transport anywhere near the top of mm. that. Um, you could see kind of the ruins of Corinth there as well if you've got time in the day. But likewise, if you're looping back that way, mm -hmm. you could leave that for another time. Because, again, they need a decent portion of time to get a mm. globes out. So then we drove through the Peloponnese and 
you know, quite a way down, all the way to Sparta. I say, saw the sort of various sites around there. You've got the, I say, the actual archaeological plot of Sparta specifically doesn't need much time. Do go and see the Menelaean. Um, if mm. you do, uh, probably, t sorry, but probably don't see Artemis or Thy, because the ruins aren't that impressive, and as we said, there is a very good chance you will get mugged or attacked. That's not being alarmist, that's genuinely, there's lots of reviews saying, yeah, we had stones thrown at us. Oh. So don't do that, probably, but do take a whole day to see Mistras. We had to sort of really rush it by just doing it in a morning, but like, yeah, you can easily spend a day there. That's gorgeous there. So good. Then, look, Mon Invasia more than justifies heading all the way south to see that. Mm. Again, crashing over there or even spending a few days, you know, you, you'd have the best time. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I say, the way that we ended up doing that, we then linked the drive to Nathplio. Um, so then we stayed in Nathplio for two nights, and while we were there, you can see all the Nathplio stuff. There's, the, say, the Venetian castle up on the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get a boat to Bortsi. I've not actually done that, but I feel like you're sort of enjoying it quite a lot, just seeing it from the shore. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fine. And yeah, you can explore the other sort of um, Byzantine and sort of Frankish uh, mixed sort of ruins up on the hill mm -hmm. as well, and the beach, and the arch, and just have the time of your life, and um, don't get attacked in this streets by a terrifying ice cream based mascot <laughs> um, and that's of course the best jumping off point to see all the Mycenaean stuff including but not limited to Tyrins that's right outside of uh, Nathplio just about walking distance but you probably want to you I know you can get the bus there of course I'm forgetting you, you can just the, the bus uh, it's of two Argos of which there are many mm -hmm. you can just hop off at Tyrins that's fine um, Mycenae, the actual site of, and the Tholos is nearby. Um, Argos with its castle, though again, you're really a bit like um, Acro Corinth, you're really gonna want a hire car just to get up the top of there to the start mm. line. Um, you've then got kind of heading east a little bit, apart from the Acropolis of uh, Midia, which is nice, but it's probably not your biggest priority, mm -hmm. uh, which is right by the sort of uh, Necropolis of Dender as well. Uh, Kazama is nice to drop in on just by the Bridge of Ardico. Epidaurus is your main target around yeah. there. Um, we mentioned that I reckon the Pyramid of Alinico, if you're in the Nathlio area, it's not far. You can see the city of Nathlio just across the other side of the bay mm. and amazing views. Yeah, go and do it. It's, it's just a great little curiosity to see. Yeah, it really is. You can tell everyone you've seen the Greek pyramids. Cool, cool, <laughs> cool. Um, there's more Mycenaean stuff besides, but that is a pretty good vertical slice of the stuff in the area. And let's say we doubled back and then saw Corinth on the return. And that, again, you've got all of the sort of Bronze Age stuff. You know, your best slice of classical Greece with Athens and Sparta. You've then got, in, you know, a bunch of Roman stuff scattered amongst all of yeah. that. Uh, oh, and I forgot, of course, the classical era um, theatre of Epidaurus. You then kind of got the Byzantine highlights of Mistras and Monimbasia. Yeah. And, um, and then getting into the Venetian era with, you know, the castles of Acro Corinth and Nafplio and just these amazing structures that were built mm. for the brief period that the Venetians occupied the Peloponnese. It's an amazing story and I will be telling it in full <laughs> when we get to the Venetian episodes but that's gonna have to wait. I'm pretty comfortable that as a 3,000 year slice of Greek history, that is the best selection that you can manage in five days. That, that is a diverse pizza right there of, of classical civilizations. <laughs> Just the little loose end I mentioned, and we sort of did this uh, when Jen and I were there in the summer. You can sort of see, you know, you're working your way, all your way down into the Peloponnese mm. just to work your way back from Athens. And the more astute you're like, hang on a second, isn't there like an international airport somewhere down there? And there is. There is an international airport at Kalamata. Oh, the Olives place. Um, <laughs> where the olives come from. Good olives now. Other things aside. My um, now, here's the thing about the city of Kalamata. And again, the city of Kalamata is fine. Mm. It's, it's not really a tourist place. It's not mm. unpleasant. It's it's very modern. I it exists either. for the benefit of its residents. As such, it's pretty much just a modern city on a grid pattern. Mm. It has this sort of small kind of broken down <coughs> castle on the uh, on this little rocky outcropping mm. and like one Byzantine church and that's basically it as far as the town goes. Look, 
Greece needs towns for its residents, not just for annoying tourists like me to go and gawp at oh, all the history. <laughs> but Kalamata, the town, I'm gonna say it, is a little bit on the boring side. Okay. So it's fine as a springboard, really into what, to the west of there is the sort of Mycenae region. Um, I say I'm calling it that there's a reason we selected that kind of all those things we mentioned for the five days. Those I would say would be your highlights. So while you could arrange this so you finish up at Kalamata and then maybe do some stuff in the Mycenae region, there are the incredible castles at Mythoni and Caroni. Mythoni being this unbelievable like Venetian place by the coast. Are you wow. kidding me? It's it's <laughs> bonkers. And there's some great like Tholos tombs around there as well. Wow. But I'm reckoning that for most people that's not a priority and I think the stuff we put in our five day itinerary kind of takes priority. So yes, you can do that asymmetrically. <laughs> One thing we've always just been surprised at is that getting a hire car from one airport or location and then arranging to drop it back at a different one, I'm always surprised at how much that costs extra. Yeah, it can do, yeah, quite quite substantially. It's, it's, it's almost like that's not really the done thing. Yeah. It's it's weird to me that that's, yeah, that just threw up so many issues. We're like, it's actually easier for us to make an itinerary that is a loop where we hand our hire car back mm. where we started rather than trying to, you know, kind of book it one place, drop it. Yeah, it did, it did seem more economical in that case. Um, yeah. As I recall. When we flew out of Kalamata, just a addendum to this, uh, again, there was all these wildfires going on around Greece. Kind of alarming, especially since some of them were not particularly far to the north of Kalamata, you know, 40 or 50 miles or so, mm. so not far away. Um, as we took off, you could just see not only this sort of haze kind of on the horizon, it's like, oh, that's not in, in the slightest bit ominous, but you could see these big plumes just kind of like oh, no. rising higher than the mountains, just the smoke kind of rising into the... Sheesh. So yeah, quite a contrast there between our summer trip and our October trip. Yeah. This has been, as you can see, quite a mish to put together. Um, I'm really kind of proud of what we managed to put in there. And there's still a lot more besides. I'm already kind of plotting uh, a <laughs> sort of West Coast road trip. I want to fly into uh, Preveza Airport again and see some more amazing Mycenaean stuff. There's a whole cluster of it around Pylos, including the Palace of Nesta wow. and some amazing stuff over there. So that, uh, I'm already plotting that. Final thing, <laughs> we said, you know, look, we're doing this in five days, get over it. I would say if you had one more day, if you're doing it in six days yep. instead of five, get an excursion to Delphi. Ah, consult the Oracle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't really... Uh, uh, annoyingly, when we first visited Delphi in 2018, and I've not been back yet, though we will be, mm. um, I wasn't actually filming travel episodes at that point. Ah. So I don't have much footage. I have a great many photographs, but very little footage. Suffice to say, it's just a beautiful location, and all the sort of different layers of ruins there are amazing. Mm. There's so much to see. It's fantastic, and again, you can get some good sort of coach excursions out of Athens. You really need a whole day to do it. So yeah, if you if if I had to give you a day six thing to do, go and do Delphi. That's really special. We're going to wrap this up here. Um, the next episode, we're still keeping it Greek. I say we've done four episodes on Crete. We've had a couple on mainland Greece, and going a bit further north. Thessaloniki is kind of like the sort of second major city of Greece and we had a chance to nip around this in April to catch a bit of Alexander the Great stuff. Mm. Way more amazing Byzantine stuff than I was even ready for. Like I knew there was some <laughs> but I was not prepared. Um, so really excited to be bringing you that episode next. In the meantime, I know I've been kind of suggesting that all I ever get in the comments is angry pushback but genuinely I do want to thank the people who've actually said nice things and have encouraged me because there's also been a lot of people who've gone to the trouble of putting that in the comments. And I know generally if you enjoy a video, you probably don't feel the need to write a comment. It feels a bit redundant, just like, oh, good job. But <laughs> thank you. That genuinely has been such an encouragement to us. Um, it really does mean something when people, rather than just 
being nitpicky or uh, belligerent in the comments are actually nice. So thank you so much for all the people who've done that. We don't run a Patreon as a channel. Maybe we'll start doing that in the future. I, I don't know. But for now, if you want to support us, all the music you've been hearing in the background is up on Bandcamp. We make all the music that's the soundtrack to these episodes. And if you want to support us, that's the place to do it. Sean and I have a podcast for all the sort of back and forth we have on these trips <laughs> where we're essentially talking nonsense for yeah. all these long drives, including but not limited to uh, kind of all the driving we did on this holiday. Um, you can catch us at the Double Yellow Parking Space podcast. That's on yes. Spotify and other platforms. It's just probably. The, the byproduct of us spending time together is that we, we end up having inane uh, hypothetical conversations <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> and so that's kind of the, the spilth of the of our uh, holidays together. <laughs> so yeah, check us out on Spotify and other places where podcasts exist. Check out the Bandcamp and we'll catch you guys very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>